And now our next showcase is Charlie Angus. Chers amis, veuillez accueillir. And dear friends, our next candidate, Charlie Angus. I'm Charlie Angus. I get my name from my grandfather who died at the mine just before I was born. Je dois mon nom à mon grand-père qui est mort à la mine d'or avant ma naissance. My parents quit school when they were teenagers. They were the kids of miners. University wasn't an option. Je me souviens de ma mère qui faisait des cours par correspondance le soir. And when he was 40, my dad earned enough money to go back to school. He became a professor of economics. That was our ticket into the middle class. And we moved into an overcrowded townhouse in Scarborough, playing the music, de joie et de débat. The first Clash album opened my eyes. It made me think that it was possible for a kid from nowhere to get active, and maybe, just maybe, help change the world. So Andrew Cash and I formed a band. We organized music rallies to get young people active in political change. Ma femme et moi, on a ouvert une maison pour les sans-abri au centre-ville de Toronto. J'avais 25 ans. Puis, on a déménagé dans le nord pour élever notre famille. On a fondé un magazine sur les politiques et la culture du nord. C'est là que je me suis battu contre la importation de déchets toxiques chez nous. I worked with Jack Layton in this fight. He encouraged me to run for public office. And I brought that grassroots activism to Parliament, fighting for blue-collar workers, the LGBTQ community, and artists. But everything became more urgent when I met 13-year-old Shannon Kustashen from Attawapiskat. I watched her grow into an extraordinary civil rights leader, fighting the brutal injustices faced by Indigenous children in this country. We lost her to an accident in 2010, but I think of her every single day. Children only have one childhood, and once it's gone, it never comes back. I'm running for leader so that I can tell Shannon's generation that there is reason for hope, that this nation really does have their back. Qu'elle peut compter sur nous. Thank you. My name is Serena Kostajan, and I'd like for you to take a look at this photo behind me. It's a photo of my sister Shannon. You may have heard of her, but she started the largest youth-driven human rights movement in Canadian history. When she was just 13, Shannon found out that her school, our school in Attawapiskat, was in such terrible shape that Aboriginal children on reserve don't have equal access to educational funding as other kids do in Canada. And Shannon, she was always outspoken. And she let everybody know how unfair that was. And the idea caught on. Young people from all over Canada joined in the fight for our equal education. And eventually, after 10 years, 10 long years, we finally got a new school in Ottawa-Biscuit. <laughs> Thank you. And one of the people who helped Shannon and my community the most was Charlie Angus. He encouraged her. <laughs> He encouraged her to become active because he told her she had a right to be angry. So, <laughs> so he helped her go to Ottawa to meet with the Prime Minister, and he also took Shannon and I into his own home and treated us as family. And he took this photo, which has now become the iconic symbol for Shannon's dream. It's been said that true leaders don't create more followers but create more leaders. That's why I'm supporting Charlie Angus as the next NDP leader.
because he has a proven record of helping people help themselves and a record of compassion for our most vulnerable people. Charlie showed the young people in my community that we have the power. Miigwech. And I'm here to tell you why I'm supporting Charlie Angus for leader. I've had the privilege of serving as a cabinet minister in an NDP government. I know what we can achieve when we have the power to put our principles into action. I want a leader who can win elections and whose principles have been tested. Charlie is a principled New Democrat. He voted for marriage equality and to protect the rights of families like mine, my wife and I and our two kids, even though his own church threatened to kick him out. Charlie se tient debout pour que les enfants et les jeunes autochtones et il est un ambassadeur de la réconciliation et de la justice. Je travaille maintenant dans le mouvement syndical. Charlie a démontré sa solidarité en visite les travailleurs sur les piquettes de grève. Il se bat depuis toujours au nom des travailleurs. Et il sait que la défense de notre environnement doit se faire en défendant également les bons emplois. Charlie is real. and Quebecers who have left us. Charlie has a plan to rebuild our party and to put regional organizers back on the ground where they're needed. He'll have us ready for the next election. I believe that when we get to see Charlie face off against Justin, there will be no doubt about who really has our back. If we want to build the nation of our dreams to fulfill the promise of Tommy Douglas and the legacy of Jack Layton, we need a leader who can take us to government and who will never sacrifice our values to get there. Charlie is that leader. Every day, Charlie shows us that people have the power. Hey folks, I'm Andrew Cash and I'm thrilled to be here among so many friends. You know, I've had the honor of working with all the leadership candidates. They are all friends of mine. They're incredible people. Nikki, Jagmeet, Guy, and Charlie. But you know, I've, I've known Charlie Angus for a long, long, long time, as he's showed you. Um, and I gotta tell you, I have never met anyone with more heart, more passion, and more integrity in my life. Ayant moi-même été politicien, je peux vous dire que j'ai rarement vu quelqu'un qui travaille aussi fort que Charlie. Et il le fait avec le même effort pour les gens de sa circonscription, de son parti et pour son pays. Charlie, you know, Charlie walks the talk. As he's, he does. I, I mean, we all know that. I mean, as he showed you, yes, we did start a band when we were teenagers. And yes, he did start uh, Home for Homeless People right then when we started that band. Well, what he doesn't tell you is that we were getting very successful. We had a clear path to a different kind of life. And Charlie decided, no, this is the right thing to do. This is what has to be done right now. And you know, he has never stopped. Il est toujours là pour écouter et se battre pour tous les Canadiens qui ont été mis de côté et pour les gens qui sont de plus en plus nombreux à ne plus trouver de place dans notre économie. You know, as a longtime freelance and contract worker, before he entered politics, Charlie knows we've got to address head on the fact that too many workers, particularly young workers, are just a bike accident away from poverty. Il faut changer ça. Et je crois que Charlie Angus est le leader qui peut le faire. But you know, folks, okay, is he a slick backroom operator? No. No, he's not. Okay. Does he say stuff he doesn't believe in? No, no, he doesn't. Is he kind of noisy sometimes? Yeah! yeah, yeah, he is that, yeah, for sure. 
But you know, when you're fighting alongside folks who are getting left out, left behind, shut down, unseen and unheard, you know, sometimes that's noisy business. And that's who he is. That's what we need in our party. That's what millions of Canadians are looking for in the NDP. And that's why I'm so proud to be here today to introduce Charlie Angus as the next leader of our party and the next Prime Minister of Canada. Charlie Angus. Hello, Hamilton. Merci, Megwitch. Je suis très fier d'être ici avec vous, mes amis. On a réussi. Je suis très fier de marcher dans les pas de Jack Layton, Tommy Douglas, Alexa McDonough, Therese Casgrain. Et pendant ce cours, j'ai réalisé ce qui est possible de présenter une vision authentique et optimiste de remplacer les politiques cyniques à Ottawa. Et c'est pour ça que je suis ici. And I want to thank my friend Andrew Cash, who I've known for so long and who started me on this road of stirring things up when we were just punk kids. And we're still giving her. <laughs> and Jennifer, je te remercie pour ton leadership, pour ton dévouement à notre mouvement. And Serena, I just want to say how moved I am that you were here to speak up for me. You know, I remember in grade eight, and you went down to Ottawa to explain the squalor and the brutal conditions that children in Attawapiskat were being forced to live with. And you spoke with such dignity and grace to politicians who didn't have a clue. And remember? Afterwards, I asked you, I said, Serena, were you nervous when you were speaking in those halls of power? Do you remember? And you said, I wasn't intimidated because I was speaking for my people. <laughs> you and your sister taught me and taught the nation that indigenous youth have incredible power to make change. Thank you. And this is why I'm here, to be a partner, to be an ally. Because the days when children go to Ottawa to beg for schools or be left alone on the front lines of a horrific suicide crisis, it has to end. And it will. And I will be in Parliament this fall to look the Prime Minister in the eye and say, enough. Enough with the obstructions, the prevarications, the 150 years of broken promises. Reconciliation, it's not a hashtag. It has to be made real for this generation of children right now. <laughs> because I am so tired of going to their funerals. We should be celebrating their graduations. That's what we need to do in this country. C'est clair, mes amis. Les vagues de suicide, ce n'est pas une crise causée par les jeunes. C'est une crise engendrée par le gouvernement canadien. Et quel genre de pays choisit to couper les ailes, sa jeunesse. Ça pour changer ça, que je suis ici. Our movement is needed now more than ever, my friends, in Parliament and on the ground. I was in Vancouver last week, where the eviction rates of seniors is skyrocketing. You know, there is something fundamentally wrong in this country when seniors can't afford to live in the cities that they built. It's got to stop. A national housing program and nothing less. And when I talk with students, burdened down with student debt who are unable to live in the cities where they've worked, they've taken the risks. They've invested in their future. And this government has let them down. But we, my friends, are going to make this right. 
because this fall I will go into Parliament and I will challenge Justin Trudeau. Work with us. We can address this crushing level of student debt. Okay, here's the thought. Bombardier's, Bombardier CEOs, they call up Justin and they get interest-free loans. Why not Canada's young people? We can make this happen. Et quand je parle avec les travailleurs et les travailleuses, c'est clair, ils ne croient pas que Ottawa comprend le réalité. Et cet automne, le gouvernement de M. Trudeau va renégocier l'ALENA. Ça va être un open bar pour les lobbyists à Ottawa, mes amis. C'est simple. Et, OK, faites-vous confiance à Justin Trudeau, Donald Trump et Brian Mulroney pour défendre vos intérêts, les intérêts des classes ouvrières du Canada? Pas moi. Je, je serai là pour vous défendre au Parlement. Vous pouvez compter sur moi. And you know, I never forgot one of the first things that was said to me when I started to launch this campaign. I got stopped at the Tim Hortons in South Porcupine, Ontario, by a 68-year-old man who told me he's going back to work underground in the mine on the drills because his pension was robbed by corporate insiders. And in Canada, that kind of theft is not only legal, they get bonuses for doing it. Indeed, and he said to me, listen, I've been promised the moon over the years by politicians. I have one simple question. If you get in, will you have my back? Well, yes, I will. Yes, I will, because people need a leader in Ottawa who will fight for them, but who will build with them. You know, on this campaign, I've seen the incredible goodness, the tolerance, the resourcefulness of the Canadian people. And let me tell you about my good friend, Colleen Wake. She works at the Cami plant in Ingersoll, the most efficient automobile manufacturing plant in North America. And Canadian taxpayers gave millions to bail out GM. And her and her workers have given them everything. But you know what we've learned is with the 1%, it's never enough. Now they want to ship the jobs to Mexico. So today, Colleen and her workers are setting up the picket lines to defend the Canadian jobs that Justin Trudeau and Andrew Scheer will never defend. And I will be with them. And you, I know my friends, we will be with the workers at Cami because this is the front line. And let me tell you about meeting with the IBEW energy workers in Edmonton. They're training the oil patch workers to build a green, sustainable economy with good paying jobs because blue collar Canadians see the future. And I want to tell you about Jeff Pistorius. <laughs> he started a delivery business with a bicycle and grew it into a large cooperative employing dozens of people with decent wages in downtown London. And when I talk to these workers, what they tell me is they want a partner in Ottawa to build to build livable cities and economies that work for people, and we will be that partner. We will. Nous faisons face à trois crises majeures. Il faut de la justice économique, de la justice environnementale, et la justice pour les communautés autochtones. Et ces trois enjeux sont indissociables. And there's another thing I've learned in the nine months of this campaign, is that leadership, it's not about the leader. It's about giving people a reason to believe that they truly have the power to make change. This is the work I have done my whole life. On a beaucoup de pain sur la planche, mes amis, mais je suis le candidat qui a l'expérience pour unir notre mouvement, pour donner l'énergie à nos militants qui vont préparer l'élection 2019. Je suis gonflé à bloc pour le job. But I gotta know, I'm going to admit it, we have a lot of work to do. But it starts, it starts by looking out for each other in these divisive times. Because we need to remember that what brings us together 
is a nation is so much greater than the false politics that divide us. And never forget that the real division that exists in this country is economic. And bringing people together is what we do as New Democrats. Bringing together the communities from the mosques in 905 and the youth leaders in Treaty 9. Standing up with this Hamilton steel worker and the bike couriers in Toronto. Reunissez les artistes de Montréal et les employés des secteurs forestiers de jean -Kier. Yeah, the uber-rich. They may have the money and the lobbyists and the inside track. But our history in the New Democratic Party, in the labor movement, in the women's movement, in the environmental movement, at the grassroots has proven time and time and time again that people have the power to make change. And we're going to bring that change to Ottawa. Because this is our party. This is our movement. This is why we are here, my friends. So let's get it done. I got your back. Comptez sur moi. People have the power, yes.